Well, hello, everyone. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, very excited to, today to have a subject of the future of Wi-Fi technology. Uh, as you may know, Huawei is heavily invested in innovation, and Wi-Fi is one of the areas of uh, great interest to the company. Before we get started, just a few pieces of housekeeping. Uh, first of all, we are going to be asking a few polling questions throughout the presentation, so we very much appreciate your participation during those polls. Please vote, and uh, we'll share the results with everybody in the audience so you can see what your peers are thinking about some of our questions. Also, uh, typically the audience has lots of questions throughout these kinds of webinars, so we encourage you to ask those questions via the Q&A panel, uh, and we'll handle most of those at the end of the presentation. Uh, and then finally, we are recording this webinar. It will be available on the uh, Huawei Enterprise USA website. So uh, shortly after the conclusion of the webinar, within 24 hours, you'll see this fully recorded version up there, and you'll be able to uh, re-watch re it or send it on to colleagues or friends that may be interested. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our primary presenter. Uh, her name is uh, Alex Arcilla. Uh, she's a Senior Manager of Product Line Marketing with Huawei's Enterprise Business Group. Alex, take it away. Hey, thanks a lot, Nick. And thank you for everybody for joining the webinar today. I'm really excited to talk about what is happening with Wi-Fi and how Huawei is actively involved in bringing this technology to our customers. A quick look at our agenda for today. Um, just to make sure that we're all on the same page, I'll just talk a little bit about Huawei, um, the, the company. I'll then go into what we see as uh, what is driving Wi-Fi adoption um, in the enterprise. I'll then go into a little bit about 802.11ac, the brand, the uh, newest Wi-Fi standard, um, both, and go into a little bit of discussion about Wave 1 and 2. Um, I'll then go into uh, some use cases uh, that uh, are well suited for uh, 802.11ac. And then I'll wrap it up with a little discussion about um, how Huawei is involved in feature standards development. Now, there may be people in the audience that may know this, um, some of this information, but those who are not familiar with the company, allow me to go over some basics. Uh, Huawei is a global information and communications technology company that is best known for powering support and supporting the network infrastructure of 45 of the top 50 telecom operators. Our solutions are deployed in over 170 countries, and our company employs over 150,000 people worldwide. Um, our latest revenue um, for 2014 um, stands at $46 billion. Uh, Huawei has been in the U.S. since 2001, originally establishing headquarters in Plano, Texas, which is where our consumer devices business is based. Our U.S. R&D eventually settled into Silicon Valley, primarily to leverage the ongoing innovation that takes place here um, in, in, in California. Uh, Huawei USA currently employs over 1,700 people in 10 regional offices. Now, Huawei as a whole is committed to creating long-term value for our customers. One way that Huawei creates this value is continuously, continuously investing in our R&D and incorporating those innovations into our solutions. As you can see from the bar chart, Huawei's ratio of R&D investment to total sales revenue has been increasingly, increasing steadily over the past six years. In 2014, Huawei spent $6.6 .6 billion alone in R&D, approximately 14% of our 2014 worldwide sales revenue. Huawei has over 70,000 employee, employees specializing in R&D, which is almost half of our worldwide workforce. They're distributed over 23 global R&D centers as well as 25 joint innovation centers. Huawei also plays a major role in the standards world. Uh, we have made numerous contributions to over 180 international standards organizations such as the IETF and the 3GPP. Of those organizations, uh, Huawei is a board member of 150 of them, um, such as the IEEE and the Open Mobile Alliance. Uh, which defines mobile phone specs and standards. And to show our drive to continuously innovate in ICT technologies, 
Huawei has over 50,000 patent applications worldwide. Uh, and the latest stats from the World Intellectual Property Organization ranks as number one in international patent filings in 2014, ahead of others such as Qualcomm and, and Intel. Now, what Huawei is still um, attempting to, uh, to do in the U.S. is educate our potential customer base of our extensive enterprise product portfolio. Another way that we add value to our customers is that we offer end-to-end -end solutions stemming from three areas. Unified communications and collaboration, data center infrastructure, and enterprise wired and wireless networking. On top of that, we have eSight, Huawei's unified network management system, a single pane of glass, if you will, for managing wired and wireless networks built on Huawei's products. We also have many products to ensure overall network security, such as firewalls and application security gateways. And we have software-based solutions in the areas of enterprise mobility management to address BYOD, bring your own device, software-defined networking, and the emerging cloud data center. But today, we're going to focus on what Huawei offers in the area of enterprise wireless plan, or Wi-Fi, and the value that we bring to this area. First, though, we have a polling question, and for that I will turn it over to Nick. Thanks, Alex. I appreciate it. The first thing we want to find out from you guys, uh, and we know that people deploy Wi-Fi for many different reasons, but the first thing we want to find out is of all the reasons, all the issues you're trying to address, what's the primary issue that you want to address with your WLAN deployment? So go ahead and vote. Uh, only one answer on this particular poll. Uh, go ahead and vote, and then we'll show you the results here in a minute. Uh, while you're going ahead and voting on the poll, I uh, also want to just remind you that we do want your questions, uh, so please keep those coming in the questions panel within your interface uh, on the ReadyTalk uh, interface, and we'll be happy to show those to you. Uh, but go ahead and uh, place your, your, uh, make your vote here on what your primary issue is with your WLAN deployment, the main thing you're trying to address. We'll give you just a couple more seconds to vote. Okay, well, I think you can see that uh, BYOD seems to be topping out the chart here with 40% and then kind of a nice mix of the other four answers, uh, which is helpful to Alex as she goes through this to understand a bit more about what's driving your motivation. Uh, so thank you very much for your participation in the poll. And uh, Alex, I'll turn it back over to you. Okay. Well, those results are actually interesting. It perfectly segues into our next topic, which is why people are demanding more wireless access in the form of Wi-Fi. Um, today's Wi-Fi, um, from my standpoint, is viewed not as a nice-to-have and not even as a must-have, but as an expect-to-have. I know that wherever I go, for either personal or work reasons, I'm looking for that Wi-Fi connection just so that I don't have to rely on um, a cellular network and the availability of the service. Uh, but from an enterprise standpoint, what is driving the need for Wi-Fi? Um, first, and as indicated by the poll, we're continuing to experience an explosion of mobile device use. With the BYOD trend continuing, more and more employees are demanding wireless connectivity at work to accommodate their devices. As a matter of fact, a growing number of employees um, we see have multiple devices that they're using all at once, your smartphones, your laptops, your tablets. Um, IT can no longer just plan for Wi-Fi capacity for the, for the traditional one corporate-issued laptop per person model. Not only is the growing number of users placing demand on the Wi-Fi network, but also the type of content that's being consumed. Uh, people within enterprises are consuming more multimedia, pictures, training videos, even streaming multi multimedia, for example, with online meetings. And all of this has to come with a wire-like expectation levels for reliability, quality, and performance. And finally, with more enterprises adopting the cloud, employees are using more cloud-based applications, from email access, file storage, and social networking, to business process support, such as CRM and ERP, 
Employees are taking advantage of getting work done without the need for a wired Ethernet connection to access business resources. So today, 802.11n remains the predominant Wi-Fi technology deployed. However, given today's demands for better and faster Wi-Fi, .11n will eventually not be able to address these demands adequately. Specifically, with the growing number of devices and the growing number of users, um, the next Wi-Fi standard will need to accommodate this growing number simultaneously at any given time. To support the higher data rates that are associated with multimedia, the Wi-Fi network will need to enable higher throughput. Data rates for .11n today max out at 600 megabits per, sec 600 megabits per second. We will need to see higher data rates to accommodate multimedia such that better performance is achieved, such as no delays and no pixelation. Finally, as more users within an enterprise adopt the cloud, the Wi-Fi network will need to enable employees to complete their business tasks. This network will need to accommodate both a larger number of users and provide higher throughput to the user so that when they work off a mobile device, it's like working off of a desktop. So now take, let's take a look at how Wi-Fi technology is advancing beyond .11n. Up until now, the, the Wi-Fi standards progressively improved both the overall speed or data rate, as well as the overall range, in other, or how much more data can reach a person over a given distance. Combined, rate and range are considered together to characterize the coverage of a Wi-Fi network. Now we have 802.11ac. Ratified in 2013, the basis for development of this standard was actually the need to support high-definition video. The key development here for this standard is that the overall throughput has been increased. Compared to .11n's maximum throughput of 600 megabits per second, .11ac actually pushes that rate up into the gigabit range to 1.3 gigabits per second. That number is significant. This is the first time that the gigabit barrier has been surpassed in, in Wi-Fi. However, this standard also addresses the need to support a larger number of mobile devices simultaneously, directly addressing increased user density. At this point, I should note that Huawei has a vested interest in .11ac. As part of our continuous innovation, Huawei actually led the standards group in developing um, .11ac. The company saw the potential for Wi-Fi in the market and decided to take an active part in its development. Now, because there were many new features introduced, the equipment vendors have staggered their introduction into the market. This is why you hear those terms, which you may or may not know, as Wave 1 and Wave 2. Wave 1 features were those that the vendors believed they could bring to market earlier than those that we'll talk about a little bit in Wave 2. But first, let's take a closer look at Wave 1. One major difference um, is that unlike .11n, .11ac will operate strictly in the 5 gigahertz band. The simple reason for this, the majority of .11-enabled devices are currently operated in the 2.4 gigahertz band. Um, the standards group did not want to crowd that band any further, as the band is already crowded with .11n-enabled devices. But beyond that, there are other features that increase both the coverage and capacity that can be achieved. If we just take a look at how .11ac improves just coverage, there are some distinct features to note. Um, the first is channel bandwidth sharing. Um, to clarify, a channel is a part of the usual bandwidth of a given frequency band used to transmit data. In .11n, those channel widths were fixed. Um, in other words, any data packet transmitted over that channel had to be small enough um, in order so that that channel could, be, could accommodate it. Um, on, the other, on the other hand, in .11ac, the channel widths can actually change over time to accommodate larger packets um, in real time. If we just take a look at the slide, we see that .11ac allows channel widths of 20, 40, and 80 megahertz within the 5 gigahertz band. 
say data was being transmitted over 40 megahertz channels. If a data packet larger than what that channel could, could accommodate, .11ac actually allows that 40 megahertz channel to borrow bandwidth from the channel next to it. The feature directly translates into increasing overall throughput rate as channels, a channel which can dynamically adjust to accommodate larger packets. The next, um, 256 QAM or QAM. Yes, it sounds really technical, but the concept behind it is actually simple. Um, for those who want to know another three-letter acronym, QAM stands for Quadrature Amplitude Modulation. Now, why does this help improve Wi-Fi throughput? Essentially, QAM is a technique for coding data onto radio waves. Um, the diagram above shows the amount of data being transmitted at any given point in time. On the left, you'll see the, maximum, the max data that can be transmitted uh, in 802.11n. On the right, for, two, six, two, for 256 QAM, uh, that is the max data that can be transmitted for .11ac. A higher number of points, as you see in the diagrams, um, shows that more data has been coded onto a radio wave over a given frequency band. Bottom line is that you're using the available bandwidth more efficiently, thus again increasing the overall throughput. And finally, single user beforming. Um, this technique was actually introduced in .11n, but that 11 ac actually standardized it for interoperability purposes. Beamform essentially enables the power of an antenna to be focused in a specific direction within a given angle. On most antennas, power is transmitted in a non-directional pattern, um, as you can see on the left side of that picture. Um, in this scenario, any device around that antenna can potentially pick up a Wi-Fi signal. But what if that antenna were placed in an environment where there were objects or other antennas causing interference? Beamforming actually allows an antenna to focus Wi-Fi signals to mobile devices more directly in order to minimize interference. And the combination of these three techniques, the, the dynamic channel width or channel bandwidth sharing, 256 QAM and single user beamforming, enable bodies enabled .11ac to increase Wi-Fi coverage. Now, as for increasing user capacity, MIMO accomplishes that. MIMO, as you may or may not know, stands for multiple input and multiple output. And essentially, for a multiple number of antennas on a Wi-Fi access point, MIMO will break apart a data stream and distribute those parts over those antennas. Each antenna will then send multiple copies of those individual parts to the receiving device. The antennas on the device will then reassemble the entire data stream using those copies with the least errors. Why is this important? From a capacity standpoint, MIMO again allows the efficient use of the bandwidth. Individual devices can actually receive their data more quickly since the transmission is broken up into segments. The more quickly one device receives their data, the more quickly other users can be served by the Wi-Fi network. And Nick, I believe it's time for the second polling question. Well, that's fantastic. Thanks, Alex. And uh, that was a great overview that kind of gave some insight into the innovation and, and involvement that Huawei's had with the standard. Well done. Uh, so the next polling question that we want to ask you guys, and this is actually one that you can do multi-answer. We just want to give, we want you to give us some flavor of what the factors are uh, when you choose a WLAN uh, vendor? What, what are you really looking for from a vendor, and what are the key uh, characteristics and considerations that you have? So go ahead and take a second to vote. Uh, we are starting to get some great questions coming in as well, so I, I do want to encourage you one more time to ask your questions uh, via the Q&A panel on the interface, and uh, we'll take all those at the end. Uh, but right now, just give us a sense of what the biggest uh, considerations are for you guys. And, and again, you can pick more than one answer on this particular poll. And we'll give you about 10 more seconds to vote. All 
All right. Well, it uh, looks like uh, ease of management and maintenance has taken the leadership position at uh, about almost 83%. Uh, and then second is just robust products and uh, down from there, a good sampling. So it looks like everything was relatively important with uh, ease of management and maintenance topping it off. So uh, great feedback. Uh, and Alex, back over to you. Okay, thank you again, Nick. All right. Um, just for warning, I'm going to spend a little bit of time, a little bit of time on this slide um, because I want to talk. I want to talk some about um, how Huawei's wireless lens products stand out. Um, these are currently our Wave One APs um, available in the states. Uh, two indoor models and one outdoor model. Um, our indoor APs include the 53 with a built-in omnidirectional antenna and the 5130 with an external omnidirectional antenna. So that um, it allows you to better position the antenna depending on your environment. Uh, both of these APs are equipped with dual band radios, um, which allows, actually allows for a maximum data rate of 1.75 gigabits per second. Um, if you're considering supporting both .11n and .11ac devices. Both, and we have one outdoor AP, the 7030, also equipped with a dual band radio with a built-in smart antenna. This smart antenna actually works in conjunction with the beamforming enabled by .11ac to better direct a Wi-Fi signal to receiving devices. It's especially useful in outdoor scenarios where Wi-Fi wi signals can be directed towards areas where users will typically be located. The maximum data rate for this AP is 1.9 gigabits per second. Now, on top of the capabilities that .11c enables, Huawei has added its own innovations in order to boost the performance and reliability of our APs. First, our auto radio and auto power features. This allows each AP to dynamically choose the channel within, with, where it will operate within the 5 gig, gigahertz frequency band, as well as adjust the radio transmit power to decrease any potential for interference between channels, um, as, we, um, as we all are probably familiar with, that interference between channels can lead to lower throughput. Second, our high-density boost feature. It's actually a bundling of technologies developed by Huawei to optimize the amount of bandwidth that each mobile device can use. The goal is to maximize the number of concurrent users with a stable Wi-Fi connection. Huawei designed these techniques to work particularly in high user density scenarios such as stadiums. These techniques include such things as scheduling of data transmission based on the quality of service to be met, and managing device access to the Wi-Fi network based on the amount of data that request. Our APs are also equipped with dual 1 gigabit Ethernet ports for both data backup as well as for power over Ethernet support, which can help to reduce the amount of cabling needed to deploy a Wi-Fi network. And last but certainly not least is what we see as our industry-leading throughput that we have achieved with our APs. Um, our APs have a dual-core architecture that separates the control plane from the data forwarding plane. By assigning one core to each plane, more processing power is available to forward traffic. Combine this with our auto radio and auto power features, our .11 AC APs can, can achieve higher throughput um, and we actually commissioned a third-party tester um, called the Tolly Group. They had issued a report last year that compared our .11 AC APs with a couple of our competitors. Um, if you want um, more information about that, um, I suggest you go to tolly.com and search under Huawei. Um, and the tests were performed um, on both the 7030 and the 5030. I should also mention that um, when it comes to ease of management and maintenance, um, we are we definitely um, 
have, excuse me, um, in terms of uh, post-sale support, in terms of the way that um, we manage, that we can manage and deploy our, our APs, we definitely have the, um, the experience and the product to support that. So for example, um, we, um, we have a web interface that can help an, you know, any IT staff to deploy and configure our, your APs. Um, in terms of support, um, here in the U.S., we have formed partnerships with over 100 channel and service partners. Um, and then we also offer maintenance services, uh, you know, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, if you want a little bit more information on that, I would suggest that you go to e.huawei.com and you can find information uh, regarding of how not only about our products, but also um, you know, about our partnerships and how we offer and, and um, how we provide ongoing support to our customers. Now, as I mentioned, uh, we, were, we were talking about Wave 1 previously. We are currently in the middle of the deployment of Wave 1 products. Um, right now, we are actually starting to see the emergence of Wave 2 products. Um, in Wave 2, dot .11 AC is slated to deliver data rates double than that of Wave 1, getting into the multi-gigabit range. Uh, now, in Wave 1, both MIMO and Beamforming focus on improving throughput for individual users. Um, in Wave 2, these techniques are extended such that now they can be applied to multiple users simultaneously. Now, early in the presentation, we talked about MIMO and how individual users can receive their data more quickly. However, in Wave 1, MIMO only serves one user at a time, as shown on the left side of this slide. With Wave 2 and multi-user MIMO, multiple transmissions can be sent to multiple devices simultaneously. Actually, multi-user MIMO depends on multi-user beamforming to ensure that the multiple transmissions are directed to the right devices. The combination of these techniques further increase the expected overall throughput and the user capacity of dot eleven AC. And Nick, I believe it's time for polling question number three. You are right, and this is our final polling question. And I know Alex has talked a lot about 802.11ac. So what we want to know now is where are you with respect to deployment of 802.11ac in your network? Uh, are you already there? Is it something that's near term within the next six months? Is it more medium term, six months to two years out? Are you more than two years out, or do you have no plans whatsoever? Um, so that is the poll that we'd like you to uh, respond to now. Uh, so go ahead and take a second to vote. Uh, keep your questions coming. We've got uh, quite a few good ones, and we'd love to have a few more. So definitely, if you have questions about any of the material or anything else related to Wi-Fi, uh, Alex will definitely be able to answer those. So uh, please go ahead and uh, send your questions in, and uh, go ahead and vote. Uh, as we're looking at the results right now, we have about a quarter of you that are already there. Another quarter are doing it uh, sometime within the next two years. Slightly lesser percentage are on the very near-term horizon, uh, and then, you know, about uh, almost a third of you are either more than two years out or no plan. So that's definitely interesting feedback. Uh, we'll give you just another couple seconds to vote, and then we'll proceed on. Interesting. Does that uh, pretty much map to your expectation as well, Alex? Um, actually, uh, to some extent, yes. Um, I, I would think that you know, given that this is. Um, you know, a decision. You know, a definite infrastructure decision. Um, potential customers want to make sure that this is uh, a worthy investment to make. Um, you know, and of course, it will depend on uh, their current situation in terms of the environment that they're in, in terms of the number of users that they have to support, and whether or not that number is going to be growing or not as well as whether or not there are going to be more devices uh, out there uh, that uh, employees will bring in to the enterprise to use and want to 
have that Wi-Fi support. So the next six months to two years is actually sounds about right. Excellent. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, take us home. Okay. Thank you very much again for that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some use cases. Um, you know, I, what, here I just want to highlight uh, what possible use cases that you can consider uh, depending on the particular industry that you are in. Um, you know, you've heard a lot about the wireless workplace and how you want to accommodate BYOD, um, Internet access uh, simultaneously for both employees and guests, and cloud, in, in cloud applications. Um, there's also the emergence of the virtual desktop interface as well, um, you know, in, seeking Wi-Fi support for that. Um, education, another big area here in the States where Wi-Fi is becoming a really big deal or has become a really big deal. Um, you know, I have knowledge about the E-Rate program that has currently taken place to actually help schools fund uh, the building out of their Wi-Fi networks. So to support things such as the one-to-one one -one device initiatives, uh, providing uh, one tablet per student, um, and then being able to bring the learning experience online. So testing, scoring, um, high-definition video lectures, um, even uh, enabling uh, wireless connectivity to audiovisual uh, equipment and printers. Uh, here at education, it's a particularly interesting case because they're always facing um, cost constraints. So going to Wi-Fi in terms of providing connectivity and also lowering uh, overall PCO would definitely be uh, two things that they'd want to consider when deploying a Wi-Fi network. Uh, retail, uh, and another interesting case, you, know, you go into a store um, and you're seeking out the Wi-Fi network, but the businesses themselves are actually using that to enable better business. Um, for example, on the spot uh, point of sale and uh, reference previous customer purchases in order to provide a, best, uh, a more personalized customer experience. Um, and then in the manufacturing distribution area, um, that you know, given the environment, given the fact that there is a little ability to provide proper network cabling, um, Wi-Fi is definitely, uh, you know, a better solution for this type of environment. Um, so tracking with um, RFID tags, uh, monitoring the working proce uh, process, even uh, for, um, for centers where there is, uh, you know, temperature sensitive material to have both temperature and humidity sensors there in order to monitor that environment in real time. Now I've mentioned a few times already during this presentation that uh, .11ac was really meant to shine in high density scenarios. Um, so um, you look at stadiums, for example. Uh, I've learned that there's actually an initiative by the NFL to have Wi-Fi enabled in all of its stadiums. And it's not just to provide a complete experience for the fans, um, because fans want to bring their mobile devices and Twitter and Facebook, you know, whatever they're doing at the time, but also turn around on them and actually provide a more holistic, complete fan experience um, in terms of instant replays, in terms of NC concession ordering. And actually, they're looking at this to enable some big data activities. They want to know more about their fans and with, uh, you know, with being connected to um, the mobile devices um, of those fans. Um, the Wi-Fi network will enable um, the stadium to actually collect statistics um, in order to find out more. Um, and stadiums are actually a really good case in which um, you want to maximize the number of concurrent users. Um, Huawei definitely has a lot of experience with respect to stadiums. Um, universities, uh, you are dealing with um, an environment where um, you have to connect modern and historic buildings dealing with varying degrees of radio frequency unfriendly environments. 
um, they're also budget constrained as well. And so they're looking to extend their connectivity not only within buildings and across buildings, but across their entire campus um, to you know, enable students to access streaming media, uh, to enable video security, um, and then to also enable these learning management systems that are, again, looking to bring the, the, the education experience more online. Um, and then convention centers. Um, so I just, just to point out, that is actually a map of the Anaheim Convention Center. It's an actually huge space. It has over 813,000 square feet of, uh, of space, um, over five halls. Um, that's actually better, bigger than the Moscone Center for those that are familiar with that convention center in San Francisco. Um, you have these, con these people participating in, in conventions, and they want to um, enable their participants to still be able to do their work. Uh, just because they go to a convention doesn't mean that work stops. Um, they want to be able to provide connectivity for the exhibiting companies rather than rely on more cabling. Um, even participating in conference sessions remotely um, so that, the con so that con convention participants have the flexibility of being able to look at exhibits or participate in sessions without necessarily having to go to the actual venue in order to sit in the audience. And this is a place also where .11ac and particularly where I would see the multi-user MIMO and the multi-user beamforming actually working. Um, it is such a huge, a huge open area. And to be able to serve a huge number of participants would be key in order to make sure that their experience is great. And finally, um, I want to talk a little bit about how Huawei is extending our thought leadership. Um, Huawei wasn't just content with um, stopping at uh, leading the development of .11ac. Um, we are actually currently leading the development of the next Wi-Fi standard called 802.11ax. Uh, the goal of this standard is twofold. One, to provide um, four times the throughput of .11ac. So talk about multi-gigabit um, throughput. And then two, to actually better the performance of individual Wi-Fi connections so that those connections are more akin to what you experience with your desktop today. Um, previous standards were really focused on over, of overall throughput, but this will be the first time where there will be a lot more focus on connection performance. Um, as you see here, um, the main features of .11ax is slated to be a combination of multi-user MIMO from Wave 2 and something called OFDMA, or Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiple Access. Um, too much of a mouthful, but the takeaway I'd like you to you have is that the combination of these standards will be supporting the huge jump in throughput that this standard hopes to achieve. Um, and the ratification of this standard is expected to occur sometime in 2019. So what should you take away from this webinar? Um, .11 AC is here. Wave 1 is definitely here. Wave 2 is beginning to appear. And it is well suited to fulfill the demand for Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, both waves um, are slated to greatly improve both coverage and user capacity that is needed for enterprise Wi-Fi. Um, additional improvements are coming with .11 AX, and Huawei is on top of that. And I hope you can see that Huawei, that we do have leadership in Wi-Fi technology through our standards work, as well as the innovations that we have put into our products to serve today's enterprise, um, enterprise Wi-Fi. And with that, I thank you very much. Um, again, if you have any questions uh, regarding our products and our services, um, you can go to this link or e.huawei.com.
and um, I will now address some questions if you still have them. Yes, thanks, Alex. And we do have a number of questions. Uh, so let's start with the first one, uh, which I think I can answer. And the question is, uh, where do I get more information on Huawei WLAN products and just products in general? Uh, and the answer to that is the URL that you see on the uh, screen right now, which is HuaweiEnterpriseUSA.com. Uh, that is a localized U.S. enterprise website uh, that has information about uh, case studies and product information, everything related to the products that we sell and support here in the United States. Uh, so you'll find a wealth of information there. Uh, the next question is, uh, when will Huawei's Wave 2 products be generally available? Alex, I'm going to let you answer that one. Okay. Um, of course, I can't give out any particular dates, um, you know, given that it's on our, given that, um, you know, there, there are there are our private plans. But I will say that our Wave 2 products um, are being planned for our roadmap, and they will be forthcoming in the next in the next several months. Great. Uh, the next one is, uh, I think, must be from a partner because the question is, how do I become a Huawei partner? Uh, and I'll answer that one as well. Basically, if you go to that Huawei Enterprise USA website, uh, you'll see a, a page for partners. If you're already a partner, you can log into the partner portal. But if you want to become a partner, uh, there's a, a little drop-down menu selection for apply to be a partner. Uh, it's a very easy process. You fill out a quick little uh, form. Uh, typically, approvals happen within 24 hours, and that gives you access uh, to our partner portal, uh, which is a wealth of information for our VAR partners, including information on pricing and training information on how to become uh, capable to sell Huawei products, uh, as well as a variety of other partner-specific information. So I highly recommend uh, getting involved and becoming a Huawei partner. Uh, next question, Alex, I think this one is for you. Uh, is does Huawei have an enterprise mobility management product? Yes, we do. I um, mentioned that in the beginning of our uh, presentation. Um, it comes with our – it is bundled under the name Any Office, um, where it encompasses that, – that product encompasses mobile device management um, and mobile application management. Um, it also comes with a portal that can be customized to any customer so that there is one screen where, where employees within a company can uh, get updates to applications, download new applications for their work, um, and uh, be able to be connected throughout the entire company. Excellent. Great answer. Uh, the next one is asking about training, and it's basically saying what kinds of training uh, is available for Huawei uh, WLAN products. Uh, I'll go ahead and answer that. There's a couple of different things you can do. If you're a partner and you want to learn how to sell these products, or if you're a systems engineer and you want to learn about arch architectures and uh, basically configurations for these products, you can actually go online via the partner portal that I discussed earlier, uh, and there's online courses that will help you understand how to sell Huawei products, and it will give you an overview of the company as well as specific detail uh, around the WLAN products or any of the other product categories that you might be interested in selling. Uh, and there's both uh, technical and sales-related content uh, on the portal. Uh, the other kind of training uh, that you might be interested in is the training for actually deploying the products. Uh, and we have a number of courses uh, that are offered uh, in various different locations, both at our uh, large offices like in Plano, Texas and Cupertino, California, as well as various other geographic locations uh, where you can go and physically sit on site with some of our experts and learn how to install these products. And the attendees at these kinds of courses, sometimes they're VARs, other times they're actually end users. Uh, but when you get done with those courses, you actually know how to pull these products out of the box, deploy them, configure them, and get them ready for production environments. Uh, so that's definitely uh, something you might want to look at if you're interested in that. Uh, next question, Alex, I think this one's going to be for you. It says, do you suggest we wait for the Wave 2 products before moving to 802.11ac? You know, that's a very good question. And I would say that, yes, um, there are Wave 1 and Wave 2. And I, really, it really depends on your situation right now. Um, if you have really immediate needs and you don't anticipate like the number to explode, you can go with wave one. Um, with wave two, yes, uh, you get the same benefits as wave one plus the 
um, the additional support for a larger number of users, whatever that number may be for you, um, and looking for concurrent support. So I would suggest that you consider what you need to support in your network and the devices that you support, uh, the applications you need to support, and look at what your growth is over time. Um, and then be able, and then you'll be able to make a more educated decision as to whether or not one one is worth it, or it's wave two is something that would be worth to um, look at more closely. Excellent. Uh, just a couple more questions. Uh, this one says, uh, "We have environments with other vendors' technology in the mix. Can you talk a little bit about Huawei's interoperability uh, with networking products from other vendors?" Yes, and so. Um, our, you know, we, we do follow standards. We um, so therefore, in order, you know, so that we ensure interoperability. Um, so, you know, just like um, with our wireless LAN products, since we're following the dot eleven AC standard, um, that will definitely ensure that our products are interoperable with under ven other vendors' wireless LAN products. So, we're good with that. Excellent. Excellent. And the final question uh, is just, where can I see a live demo uh, of Huawei WLAN products? Uh, and interesting that you just mentioned interoperability because uh, one of the shows that we have coming up is actually interop, uh, and one of the amazing demonstrations that we do every year uh, is being able to interconnect and interoperate with a variety of other vendors that uh, uh, exhibit at that show. Uh, and Huawei has always had a very large presence uh, at interop and, and shown their ability to interop with or uh, to interoperate with all the different vendors in the networking space. So that's definitely a place you can come and see us if you happen to be uh, at that show. Other than that, uh, if you see the phone number up on the screen here, you can call us and we can set up either a virtual demo or a live demo uh, in a location near you and or at one of our uh, corporate uh, locations that we have spread around the United States. Um, so Alex, that's about the final uh, question that we had come in. Uh, any final parting thoughts for the audience uh, relative to the whole WLAN discussion? Um, basically, I, 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 I really think that this is a very interesting time for wireless LAN. Um, uh, Wi-Fi is definitely at a point where it is something that we all expect to have. Um, I firmly believe that Huawei has uh, great products that can serve our customers and thus uh, be able to empower their Wi-Fi networks in order to get their business done. So. Um, and I hope that you were able to just learn a little bit more about uh, today, today's state of Wi-Fi. And I thank all of you for participating today. Well, with that, we're going to go ahead and close it out. Thanks again to everyone for taking some time out of your day. And we hope to see you very soon on another Huawei webinar. Thanks, everyone.